it's been raining out uh, here in East Tennessee and spent the last week or so uh, in my spare time working on cleaning up some of my shells. Um, so I thought I would share with you guys uh, the whole process of how I'm doing that and how we could take a shell that looks like this and convert it over to a shell that looks like this that's been fully cleaned and preserved. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start through on the process, um, do as, as much explanation as I can. Um, it's been a new process for me. I've been learning a lot as I've gone. So maybe this video will help you uh, as you're cleaning your shells and help you to not make some of the mistakes I've made. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, I want to emphasize here at the beginning of the video that while I will be moving through each process that I'm using to clean the shells and we may learn some stuff along the way, uh, this is not meant to be a how-to video. This is more of a documentation of the processes that I'm using to get my shells clean. Um, there's a lot of people out there a lot more qualified than myself to teach you how to clean and preserve Civil War artillery shells. And I'm going to direct you to my friend Bo, the Aqua Chiggers page. Here's a link to his page right up here. And go to his page and subscribe, like his videos. He's got hundreds of videos on metal detecting in the water, metal detecting on land, and pertinent to this discussion, uh, on cleaning and preserving artillery shells. Um, I also want to emphasize really quickly that the, the artillery shells that I will be working on today have been professionally disarmed. Um, they are completely inert. Um, they've been diffused, so they're completely safe. Um, you need to make sure that your artillery shells are completely safe before you attempt any of these processes uh, on these shells. So know what you have, make sure it's safe before you ever attempt any of this. Okay, the first thing I wanted to point out is that not all the shells that you find are going to look like this. Um, this one was in the bottom of the creek, it was very concretized with rocks. And it, actually I wanted to keep this shell just like this because I liked the way it looked, but in the name of preservation and education, I will clean this one up. But a lot of the shells you're going to find might look like this, a um, little bit less surface rust, or a little bit less uh, stuff stuck to it, rather. And some might look like this. This has like a, almost like concrete on the outside of it, and it's completely full of rocks. So this one's going to be quite a job um, getting all the rocks out of there. And so is this one, really. It's got quite a few rocks in there. So anyway... Um, I'll probably start with this shell. Um, this one's about the worst shape, and we'll work through the process on this one, and possibly uh, look at some of the processes on these. So, all right, here we go. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is knock off most of this rock. Um, when you're hitting this with a hammer, we're going to use a hammer to do this. Um, you want to be gentle. These, I know it's a shell, it's iron. They can break. Um, I broke a base cup when I was cleaning one, hammering on it. Um, so I only recommend this hammer if you have big kind of rocks like this. And we're just going to do it lightly for now. And we'll let electrolysis do most of the work. But I did want to share this knocking the, the skin off with you because oftentimes it'll come off in a big clump. So let's go ahead and get to work on this. Um, and if you get down to finer stuff, I switch over to this wooden mallet, kitchen mallet. Um, so that I know I'm not going to do damage. So, all right, here we go. Oh, and make sure you're wearing some sort of glasses for safety. Nice chunk come off there. It's like opening a Christmas present. It could be nice and smooth under here. I suspect it'll be pretty pitted. Although that's looking pretty good right there. And like I say, just nice and slow. You don't want to get in any kind of rush cleaning shells. 
It's real easy to go too far. Um, but you can always go back and do more to it later, but it's, it's super easy to go too far. And once you've done that, it's hard to come, well, it's impossible to come back. So, And I'm just working on this bigger stuff. Like I said, we'll let electrolysis get most of it. And that way we don't do any unnecessary damage. Kind of neat these pieces when they come off. That's about as far as I'm going to go on that one for right now. Um, I'm going to try and let electrolysis do some of this work for me now so uh, that I don't compromise the skin of this shell. As you can see, that's that's actually a lot smoother than I would have anticipated um, underneath of all those rocks. So I'm going to take my time with this one, let electrolysis do the rest of that work, and uh, we'll go ahead and set it in there. And we'll check in on it as it progresses. Uh, into my electrolysis bath. As you can see, I've got a big railroad plate here. Um, and my shell is sitting down in there cooking away. You're going to want to see a lot of bubbles like that. And if you're not seeing a lot of bubbles like that, you probably don't have a good enough connection. Um, there's plenty of videos on how to do electrolysis. Um, so look one of those up. The big thing is we've got a car battery charger, manual car battery charger. We've got the positive lead hooked to a sacrificial piece of iron. And we have the shell down here on the negative side. And it is cooking the rust off. So that's probably going to sit in there a solid day or maybe a little longer. And... We'll take a look back in on it and see how the rust removal is going. Okay, it's uh, shell's been cooking for quite a while. Most of the rust has come off. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the hammer, get the last little bits of this that I can off with it, and uh, it's getting close though. This thing's real close. real lightly tapping this just barely just to try and break stuff loose at this point you definitely don't want to be beating on it very hard real quick I wanted to show you I'm working in this groove here um, it's slow and delicate work uh, and again, I don't know, you know, this isn't necessarily the right way to do it, but it's the way I'm doing it. Um, so I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got a, a flat bladed screwdriver. And it's a pretty wide one, so it's not doing, you know, it's not really like a gouging type thing. But, uh, and I'm just getting in here and working this little by little. Like I said, it's really kind of slow and steady work, but 
it's cleaning it up pretty good in this crack. So I'm going to try and work my way all the way around. I don't know if I'm going to get there. We'll see. But I figured I'd show you how I was trying to clean that groove out on this shell in particular. This is new. Some of them have, you know, it's popped right out. I give it a little whack, it pops right out. But this one's been pretty stubborn, I think, because of all the rocks that were encrusted on it. So, But the shell's coming out pretty good all in all. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep at it. Last little bit, it's always the toughest. <sighs> I will get back at it. Alright guys, there we have the shell. Um, we're pretty much ready to go into wax now. Didn't take too much work considering um, how corroded up this shell was. You still see a little surface rust on there, but... Um, I'm not going to go a whole lot further with this shell. Like I said, um, real easy to go too far on these. And once you've gone too far, there's no going back. So I'm going to be happy with this, considering it was just a big rock pile. But you see, I got the groove cleaned out pretty good. and Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that shell. So anyway... Um, We'll move on now to the wax process and uh, how that all goes. So, all right, we'll see you at the wax. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you real quick um, this basket I've contrived. I'm preheating the wax up a little bit. Let's see if I can get it a little bit brighter in here. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, I'm preheating the wax just a little bit before I go outside. Made this basket so I can lift. Uh, shells in and out of the hot wax um, they're gonna be super hot and I'll talk about that more when we're taking them out but yeah you're gonna want to make some device or have some tongs or something capable of picking those shells in and up out of there because they're gonna be hot okay all right guys you can see that this is boiling now the wax is boiling uh, I'm going to let this boil for probably about an hour or so, uh, at least until the moisture has boiled out of it, um, out of the pieces that are in there. Anyway, uh, you're going to want to do this outside because if this boils over, I've got a pretty deep pot here, but if this boils over, it's going to catch on fire. It will burn your house down in a hot second. So, uh, with that said, make sure you're doing this outside. Make sure you watch it. Even if it is outside, uh, you don't want it to go away or catch on fire. Have a big mess, big problem. So, anyway, save the first and uh, boil the water out. And when we're done, we'll move on to the next step, pull the shells out. So, we'll catch up with it there. Okay, guys, I know it's... Uh, hard to see but the moisture has quit boiling out of these shells so I'm going to go ahead and take them off the heat and uh, show you what I have to do with them then okay guys uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this basket out um, first thing I want to say about this is these shells are exceptionally hot at this point um, like send you to the hospital high um, 
So you're going to need a basket or something like that to pick the shells up out of there. Um, you notice I got these big gloves on. I'm going to pull them off of here. I'm going to be as quick as possible. It's like hot potato times a thousand. This will melt your skin. It's so hot right now. So. Just that small amount of time with these big old gloves and uh, yeah, you can tell it's hot. So anyway, I'm going to let those sit now uh, for a few minutes. One thing I will say is if you've got more shells to go in to the wax, um, you're not going to want to do that right away. This is just like boiling oil. If you put water in there you're going to have an explosion, and a big one. It's going to burn you uh, pretty badly. So wait for that wax to cool down quite a bit before you try and put any more shells in there. Um, like I said, the smallest amount of water in there, I could probably drop a drop in there, and you could hear it right now. Let's see. See, if I put that was two little tiny drops of water. If you dropped a wet shell in there, you would have a massive explosion. So keep that in mind, guys. Okay, uh, now we'll move on here in a few minutes to the next couple steps. And these shells will stay hot, by the way, now for like five hours. They're gonna stay too hot to handle. So um, here in about 30 minutes, though. I'm going to come back and uh, get a little bit of the excess wax off. So, all right, we'll be back. Okay, the shells have been cooling off for about five minutes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take two paper towels and go in here. And they're still piping hot, but I'm going to try and knock off any wet spots I might see on them. Uh, paper towel it off just real quick just a dab and that's going to keep anything from having big ugly uh, wax spots on it so that ought to do like I say just knocking any anything that looks wet off real quick and uh, then we're going to leave that wax to just set up and I'll come back to them in four or five hours here and we'll do the last step on these shells. So. Okay guys, uh, here's the last step in the process. Um, I'm gonna take this brush and go over this shell real quick and brush. And that'll rub the wax in and keep you from having a uh, kind of dull white coat on there. So. Looking at this shell, I don't, I, I don't know. I might go back and work on this shell a little more, but it's hard to say. It'll do for now. At least I've got uh, it most of the way cleaned up, and uh, it'll help preserve. It. Here's the shell we started with. Go ahead and brush it up. As you can see, that's, that's coming out pretty good, um, all in all. A lot of people like to paint these and that sort of thing, but that's a lot harder to go back from, I think. With this, I could just heat it up, get the wax off, and I could do some more work to it if I wanted to or needed to. So I like the wax for that reason, if no other. Anyway, that should about do it. This shell is done. There you go. One uh, preserved Civil War shell, start to finish. Hope this video helped you guys out. Um, 
maybe you learned something. I know I've been learning something going through and doing these processes. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you did. And hopefully we'll have a bunch more of these to preserve next season.